Telecom continue to rule the world. Fuzzy goes godlike. Welcome back to the final week of MSI 2021 taking place in Reykjavik, Iceland. RNG and PSG Talon are arriving at the arena at this beautiful country for our first best of five of the tournament. And whether they are a global powerhouse or a dark horse, the reality remains the same. Today's winner will earn their spot in the final on Sunday. As we see the players arriving, I'm shocked and I'm joined here in the studio by Ender and by Clement, thank you so much for joining us. Clement, uh, I think you are probably the perfect choice for a guest, knowing that you know a lot about every region, but specifically about the PCS and about the LPL. Yeah, these two regions are my beloved two horses, and now they go up against each other. I'm really split on who I should be cheering for here. Yeah, I saw it on Twitter, but we'll get to your predictions uh, later. Of course, we only arrived here today after an exciting week of Rumble action. After five days of best of ones, a double round robin. This is our top four. That does mean we have to say goodbye to Pentanet and Cloud9. Clement, hopefully we'll see them at Worlds. Yeah, for me, Pentanet GG really had a tremendous showing right here, showing up great for regions that have been disbanded. And honestly, they almost took the title away from the LMS for the best region to ever be disbanded. So <laughs> hats off to them. I know they're cheering for PSG as well. We should really be united in these two regions between the PCS and the LCO. Yeah, I mean, Pentanet, they absolutely stole all of our hurts. They also stole Cloud9's chances of moving on out of the Rumble stage. And for Cloud9, it's a team with such high highs and such low lows too. Yeah. I can't understand them because out of the four teams now in the knockout stage, they took games off of three of them. It's only PSG that they were not able to come away with the win at some point in the tournament. Oh, it, it's absolutely heartbreaking, but that's the way it goes at these tournaments. You have to show up every single game or enough games to make it to the next stage. And that is what Dom one did. Now, Clement, there were some question marks about some individuals' performances or even the team's performance at some parts in this stage. How secure do you feel about Dom One right now? Damon, for me, have the best baseline in terms of their laning phases, and they punish singular mistakes the best out of any team. If it comes to best of fives, I think this is still actually the team to beat. However, as you have mentioned, I think there has been a lot of spotty individual performances, especially from Barrel and his KDA and Khan engaging on the Scion. A lot of iffy moments, but tied together by Showmaker keeping this squad all together. If they can fix their individual mishaps, I still this still see this team as the favorites coming in. Yeah, and while Dom won, they were undefeated in, or they weren't undefeated, but they were number one seed coming out <laughs> of the Rumble stage. Sorry about that. Uh, they were unable to take a win off of RNG and those are still my two favorite teams to make it to the finals here. That's who I think is going to end up uh, playing each other on Sunday. It's actually super puzzling that even some of the teams that are not here anymore were able to take down RNG, uh, namely the team that did make it through from the LEC to Mad Lions. They secured their spot specifically by taking down RNG Ender, even though it seemed unlikely before because Mad hadn't showed good performances versus top teams. But they showed up when it mattered. It was so important seeing El Yoya and Humanoid get on the roam fast factory and make it down to the bot lane as well, especially for this Mad Lions bot lane that has looked so shaky, not just, uh, you know, last year at Worlds, if people remember internationally, but also just this split in general. Karzi is having the tournament of his life and was a huge factor in their win over RNG. Clement? Yeah, I think Mad Lions really showcase that they are the most tenacious team to really deal with. They can play through so many different angles. That what's uh, that is what makes them so dangerous. We've seen Humanoid statistically best mid laner, uh, actually very close to Showmaker, but statistically best mid laner. And also they can play through bot lane or top lane at the same time. So it's kind of the variety and the different ways that they can take you down, which makes Mad Lions so interesting in my view. Very interesting, uh, but I think both for the Mad Lions tomorrow and PSG Talent today, they are going to be underdogs. But I would like to stand still for a second with uh, PSG Talent flying to new heights and surprising many by securing the third place. Not their coach, that's exactly where he put them, actually, one of the coaches, Clement. Um, but it's been so great to see this team rise again after so many people had underestimated the region, I think, as well. 
This was a huge shock to me as well. PSG are coming in completely uncontested in their domestic region, and they're playing as a self-assembled vehicle. That's the joking term that we refer them to <laughs> because they're not playing with Unified, their best player and statistically their early game focus. Doggo stepping in was really rocky at the start, but we're now seeing the team be able to gel together. Uh, River for me has also been a standout player in this new jungle meta, and they're just a great surprise, a great dark horse to carry on the hopes of the former LMS and now the PCS. That's been the, the most exciting thing for me to see too, not just River's early game impact, but as you mentioned, Doggo coming into You're the team. You're such a fan. And just seeing him warm up with the rest of the team, like, because when I watch Doggo uh, in the PCS, like, sometimes he would, he would, like, play fights, like, very, very aggressively, you know, it was clear he was mechanically gifted, but he was kind of unchained. And then, you know, he's a little slow to start, you know, not going to rock the boat too much, but as he's played more and more games with this squad next to Kai Wing, that duo has only looked better and better. Yeah, have been an absolute pleasure to watch and we will possibly get five games of them. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket. We have three matches left, all best of fives. So you win two best of fives and you are the MSI champion. Tomorrow, the first seed, Dom1, will be taking on the Mad Lions and today RNG take on PSG Talon. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we've got underdog matchups in, for both those days? Yeah, but you only have to win six games, so it's not right. that hard. And then you're the champion. That's easy. Yeah, Clement, it's, it's easier than it looks, right? Or is it harder than it looks? I think it's harder than it looks. Uh, I think for most people, the most interesting thing is that uh, we actually had Damon sending PSG up against RNG. PSG are kind of like Damon's assassin, their hitman, <laughs> so to speak. These two teams are very, very familiar with each other. Both of coaches from RNG are actually ex LMS, and their organization is ran by ex Flash Wolves uh, uh, organizers as well. So I imagine these teams scream each other a lot, and Koma definitely knows about this. So he's actually betting on ah. PSG trying to take out RNG. Ooh, I love that you brought that up. I hadn't even thought about it that way. It's very, very spicy. And obviously, uh, we can also see why they would uh, take the Mad Lions as their opponent since they were able to beat them so handily two times. Very interesting stuff. And while we unfortunately said goodbye to Cloud9 last week, Fudge's unreal performance on Lee Sin has been living rent-free in our heads ever since. Let's find out how he made that win versus RNG happen in this State Farm Assist of the Week. A quick trick and a kick in this Assist of the Week presented by State Farm. With tensions rising, both Cloud9 and RNG were looking for the perfect engage. Without looking, Fudge dove headfirst into the fight for a dance with Gala. Comes a flash of Vulcan. Oh, flash away from Xiao Hu, Featherstorm. There's the stopwatch. Fudge has the flash kick. Dragon's Rage, he gets in. He gets Gala. And the Killer Instinct collect the combo. Who says top leaders can only play tanks? I don't know. I mean, uh, your top laners playing Lee Sin was definitely a new thing in this tournament, but I think it, it puts some junglers to shame, showing them that, hey, I can do these this. solo laners might have some better mechanics than you, you guys. Do I don't know. Exactly. Very interesting stuff. And the players, as we see in the games, they are rivals on the Rift, but we have seen a lot of heartwarming content from our pros on Twitter as they've been chilling with their global counterparts in Iceland. Let's take a look. Heartwarming, you know they're they're all pros, but of course they're they're 
people and they want to meet other people and they meet their stars and it's so, so fun. It's just, it's, it, my heart's melting over yeah. here. And then I'm also just so jealous. I'm so jealous that I get to be in Iceland, get to see everyone. This is what I've been missing with international events yeah, is, I, is people getting to cross borders. Yes. Um, and well, Clement, I was surprised because it's supposed to be a heartwarming montage, right? And then PSG comes in and we see that tweet. They have <laughs> not let up on social media. Um, I mean, that was as entertaining as our play maybe so far. PSG and G2 have the two best Twitter accounts, so anyone out there who hasn't followed those, please go ahead. You're missing out on so much fun. Yes, all the memes. So uh, let's get a bit more serious here as we saw some incredible performances from many players over the last couple of weeks. So I asked my analyst to put together a all-pro list coming out of every player from the Rumble stage. So we're going to start with Clements, I believe. Kick it off. Who is on your all-pro team? First off, I think Xiao for me is the number one for the top laner. Nobody has a must ban Lucian, and he's been able to play defensive and offensive equally well. Now, second of all, River, I think there's a little bit more contest here. In a vacuum, yes, I'd go with Canyon, but I think River in this tournament actually has the correct idea with the big three in Morgana, Rumble, and the Udir. He's much more about creating early game pressure. He has the best first blood rate. He's creating the most action for any team in PSG, and that's allowing them to continue on this trailblazing style of just blowing up other teams in the early game. And I'm with you, Clement. Like, uh, everything on this list looks good. I would just personally swap Canyon in for River. I think River has been having a fantastic tournament, no doubt about that. And as for what PSG need from their jungler, he's the guy that blows up in the early game. But Canyon is just the best jungler in the world, in my opinion. And I think that what it really comes down to is two very distinct styles. These junglers could not be more different. For River, it's about coming to lanes, to exploiting laning mistakes, and capitalizing on that. For Canyon, he doesn't care about the lanes. It's about exploiting poor pathing decisions from his opponents. So he's always going to come away with the lead on his own. And his jungle style is baked into the identity of Domlon. All the laners play for him. They're all gonna collapse onto jungle camps when there is going to be a fight of raptors or something like this. So for me, I believe Canyon's cons consistency and his consistent excellence is what puts him at the top. And I think that's fair, Clement. Both junglers though have been phenomenal all tournament long. Yeah, I really think it's just about the meta and which one actually comes out with the uh, more effect and impact on the team. For Canyon, for me, he's still that late game carry style of junglers. If you think about his world champion run, it was things like the Graves, like the Lilia and Kindred, all champions that you farm up and create massive impact as a carry late game. But I think for the meta champions this time around, it actually suits River style a little bit more to get more early game action and just get the ball rolling with your lane. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we pull up maybe Clements or Ender's uh, all-pro team again, because there's only one difference, which is River for Canyon for Ender. But I am very interested in the bot lane. I don't think anyone will fight you on Showmaker in the mid lane. But Gala and then Kai Wing in the support position, Ender. I love that you're giving him the credit. Why has he impressed you so much so far? I mean, I just think Kai Wing's uh, ability both to impact the map on, uh, of course, all these roaming champions, the Leona, the Nautilus, even the Thresh I know has been a pocket for, for his in the past. And also, as he continues to warm up through the tournament with Doggo alongside him, he is impressing so, so much. And I think it's a little bit shocking in a sense too in PSG's success, the wins they've been able to get. So much of that is driven by, yes, River in the early game, but also laning dominance from Doggo and Kai Wing. Comment? It really came down between Ming and Kai Wing, but the d difference maker for me was that in both PSG versus RNG games, Kai Wing actually came out ahead with over two kills before the 10 minute mark. So if you look at the laning aspect here, Kai Wing is kind of the clear favorite. And also another thing that I think really goes into his favor is if you look at the two big supports in this tournament so far, it's been Nautilus and Leona. Mm -hmm. Nautilus, everyone pretty much plays the same. There's not a huge skill gap between that champion, but for Leona, Kai Wing has made his career on this champion. He is the Leona King. This is best champion by far. And I think he actually gets a leg up because the meta is in his favor. I love it. And we're going to dive a bit deeper into that bot lane matchup also as we get closer to the match. But if the games wrap up today and you want to hear more League of Legends news and discussion, we got you covered because the first episode of the new Spotify exclusive podcast, Rift Reaction, hosted by Travis Gafford and Emily Rand, is out now. It will be releasing every Wednesday and they'll cover trending news in the world of LOL Esports. Plus, fans have the chance to join in the conversation with an interactive polls and Q&A. There is a poll live right now. You can answer who 
will win MSI, Damwon Kia, RNG, Mad Lions, or PSG. You can go to the Rift Reaction podcast on Spotify and tell us your pick. That is awesome, and we'll definitely be checking that out. The first uh, episode is, by the way, already live. Now, before we get into the opening series, let's take a minute to highlight a highly unusual fun fact about our host country. Our competitors still have a few more days to enjoy the cuisine of Iceland, which includes some more unique methods of smoking meat. When Nordic, oh, when Nordic settlers began running out of trees to burn after their arrival in Iceland, they developed a new method to help them preserve meat, smoking it over sheep's dung. Hungikut is the name for this type of traditional Icelandic lamb dish and typically is eaten today as a Christmas dinner though it's also served thinly sliced on some bread for casual lunch as well. Oh my, ruined a perfectly good suit. Why do we have to do this? Just that, it's a fact, but it's not fun. I think it's very fun. It's a good thing we're sitting down. No, I think it's super fun <laughs> and as tasty as some hankyot sounds, there's something else I want to dig into, and that's the match at hand. Um, RNG Ugh. versus PSG. So uh, RNG, of course, a very dominant team so far, but also a dominant team historically. They are really, I would say, part of the furniture, and I mean that in the best way possible. They are a legacy organization in League of Legends, Clement. So um, roll us through the high beats and the important beats in their illustrious career. We really got the first taste of Royal Never Give Up in 2016 MSI when Xiaohu led the team, without Uzi by the way, solo killing Faker in the group stages, and then the big bombshell finally dropped. 2016 summer, Uzi comes back to the brand and the organization. They go on to quarterfinals in 2016. They make it to semifinals in 2017, and 2018 was the year everyone thought that they were going to go on the golden year. It was the year of the dog, and they were playing protect the puppy. So <laughs> everything seemed to align right there. They won both domestic titles, the first for Uzi. They won MSI against King Zone, and then they even went to Asian Games representing the Chinese nationalist team. Four teams, uh, four members were in that team, a precursor to an Olympic event that really highlighted them to a national treasure status, but then it all came crashing down. 2018, once again, Perks dashed their dreams as they did again in Rumble stages, and Uzi eventually decided to retire in 2020. RNG would actually miss playoffs in 2020 summer, and with only one roster acquisition of Way, they would come back and win LPL again in 2021, but this time doing so by playing around their top lane. This is a completely new style of their, uh, of their play and a tremendous uh, story for them. No, absolutely, and I think that it's it's so great to see them find their their footing, find so much success too after being dominated by Uzi on this team as the star player, and now saying no, Xiao, who's actually been around for so long too. Now we're playing around him in the top lane. Then this tournament, even coming into it, Gala wasn't the focal point. If you watch the finals of the LPL, obviously had a great showing there and, and got a lot of praise, but it's it's still shocking, I think, to see and shows how strong LPL AD carry are that we believe Gala is the best performing ADC at MSI when domestically that wasn't even necessarily the case. No, and I think when you also look at their run through the playoffs, they weren't the team that was expected to come to MSI. You know, they, they got knocked down by FPX then beat them at the end. And it's cool because I think it shows that as a legacy organization, there can be new blood that comes. But if you make the right decisions, you are going to prevail and you can find uh, your spot at MSI possibly a fight for the title. For PSG Talon, though, also a very long history. They have a tall order today, taking down RNG, but the PCS, the spiritual successor to the LMS, they have always been a bit of a dark horse, Clement, and they have always been able to surprise and upset. LMS traditionally has been a very top-heavy region, and once again, in the PCS, that is the case. PSG went 26-1, and pretty much uncontested the entire way through. And the biggest storyline this split was Maple's return to the actual region. He spent two years in the LPL in 2019 and 2020. He left, didn't get any international experience there, but we are here to celebrate Maple once again returning to the scene, backed by almost a decade of excellence. 
We have a saying back in the LMS that once Maple turned 17, it was time for other mids to leave the scene because that's how good he actually was. That's how impactful he was. And it's time to celebrate him for his five Worlds appearances and four times into the MSI every single time getting his team into the semifinals. Maple is not only measuring up himself against his own legacy, but also against the big three of the Flash Wolves. You know, we have seen Sword Art go on and be a world finalist. We have seen uh, Karsa win the LPL three times already. Maple is looking for that next big milestone and prove that he can measure up to the remaining legacy of Flash Wolves. Everything that he's done, he's been great for this region. He is the head man, the face of both the LMS and the PCS, and he is here to prove that once again he can lead us possibly to a championship oh i've got goosebumps yeah i mean that's that's the first milestone is making it to the finals because if you look at the pcs and the lms by extension five out of six msis they've made it to the knockout stage but they have never made it past this first best of five past the semi-finals and today they almost have the ultimate task going up against rng absolutely it's such a historic rivalry even though a lot of the members have changed on the organizations they embody uh, a a lot of history, I would say, from the scene. But as said, today, they need to fight each other. And as you would expect from two teams with such distinct identities, PSG Talon and RNG possess unique play styles. We're going to start with PSG um, and then talk about their early game ender. We've seen that their early game can be absolutely suffocating to some teams. Yeah, exactly. Just overwhelming, right? And so much of that comes through the early influence of River. And again, his ability to find really great gank opportunities. This is a team that looks to kill you in the early game. And it's important that they do that because later on we've seen them them lose leads that they've had, whether it comes down to the team fights or getting picked off in very crucial moments. It's very important that River is able to find the early game dominance, that he's able to put a Maple or a Dog ahead, these types of players, to get the snowball rolling and play for early soul. I think if you can force earlier fights in the game, if you are PSG, by getting early kills and getting early Drakes, that is going to be their path to success. Is this also going to be their path to success in general? Um, Clement, do you think they have to do what they did in the PCS and what they've done here so far and put, go all in on that early game? I think if you're playing with Maple and Hanabi, who've both been from the Flash Wolves, you are going to get a very similar result to what the old Flash Wolves used to be. And that was a tempo and tower dive based team. They always go for the juggler. And what we've seen in the RNG series is that if RNG tried to hold their towers with three or two members, they are going to get tower dove instantly blown up. And that's where your big lead is going to come from. But on the flip side, they really are not a good team fighting team. Even though PSU was dominant domestically, even against Beyond Gaming, their team fights were not very one-sided. So this is something where I think their strengths are very, very much solely focused on the early game, and they're actually lacking in split push or team fight departments the later the game goes. Yeah, I agree. It shows also out of the stats, out of the Rumble stage, they didn't do the best in terms of the team fights. So let's look at a couple of key bands that they can go for. Varus, Lucian, why the choice for these? Why can these not be on the Rift from RNG? Well, if, if you're trying to play fast for the early game, you can't let the enemy team have lane dominant champions. And for me especially, I'm looking at the solution for Xiaohu on the top side. Like, we've seen him on this Lucian just blow open any top lane matchup. Even if you try to send River top lane and gank him, we've also seen Xiaohu come away with 1v2 plays on this pick. So I think the Lucian absolutely is a no-go, and I think the Vars too. Well, let's connect that then, that Lucian and the Vars, but I think specifically the Lucian to the way we've seen RNG play this whole MSI, and the way that even if they're not explosive in the early game, which they, by the way, also weren't necessarily in the LPL, they still manage to keep the gold even. They always get something for something. Yeah, well, RNG are just sort of like mid-game macro master in a way that say that a few times fast. No, uh, I think that their ability to realize and understand when they're falling behind where they can attack on the map. So say the enemy team has a lead, well, dragon spawning, they're gonna go Drake. You know RNG isn't gonna all in 5v5 if they're down a couple thousand gold. Instead, it's about running topside, getting a tower, taking jungle camps. And I think one thing that is really uh, understated on RNG is their min-maxing of jungle camps. You'll see Xiaohu or Gala take camps all the time 
on the side of the map that their jungler isn't playing. And what this means is that in situations where the opposing team is trying to take an objective and then push on one side of the map, RNG can often get three quadrants of the jungle. And I think we saw it even in, this, in the two matches between PSG and RNG, is that PSG always had like two, three camps up on the map because they're trying to force, they're trying to go, go, go. RNG never left camps up for very long. Yeah, Clement, it's almost uh, yeah, very annoying to play against as the enemy team because you feel like you can never win out, even if you just want to fight or if you just push the tower. Yeah, people really need to recognize this new RNG style. They are not the protect the puppy of old. They are actually a tri-carry team right now. And what that means is the later they go, the more the damage discrepancy is when you're running three carries, especially something like a Lucian out of Shahu early. So even in the um even in the LPL, the way they play is they try to try to avoid a lot of these Drake fights, try to get to the late game, and then they all in on the later Baron fights. That has been their sort of bread and butter play to just go in later and find decisive 5v5s much uh, much later down into, uh, into the, the game. So we have this stylistic matchup where one team very decidedly from PSG is trying to play tempo, and on the other hand, RNG are trying to go for later game team fights. And the killer of tempo is picks in so many cases. If you lose numbers on the map, you can't find plays. You have to, you know, take your foot off the gas a little bit. So it takes us to some critical champions for RNG side, the Morgana and the Zoe in particular. And I think especially it was best seen in the second matchup between these two teams where, I mean, PSG had a lead through the early game. It wasn't quite as extravagant, but then RNG see two members recall on wards. Well, instantly they're coming out of Fog of War with the Zoe. They're getting a pick on Dagala. That turns, or they're getting a pick on to Doggo, that turns into a Baron, and the game just instantly explodes. So these are two very critical champions that PSG needs to look to take away. Yeah, definitely so. And uh, we've, of course, seen this match already twice. We've seen two games between them where PCS was very good, well equipped to deal with RNG, despite their differences in playstyle. And we saw that twice it came down very much to the bottom lane and everything that changed or, or that started rather out of that bottom lane. Um, the first time around, there was 2v2 dives all over the board. Clement, uh, how do we think this bottom lane matchup is going to go in this best of five. So a lot of it does come down to picks. For both of these dual lanes, their best champion uh, combinations are actually the Kai'Sa plus the Nautilus. So I think Red Side actually gets a pretty big leg up in this matchup if they can get that one-two combo punch together as we've seen in some of these clips right here. And the other point is just the 2v2 laning strength itself. I actually give PSG a pretty good uh, favor right here. In both of the matches, we've seen PSG be able to coordinate with their jungle a little bit better to get early lane kills and even in just a 2v2 aspect we have seen nautilus uh coming out from kai wing just getting the leg up so this is the lane that's that's i think it's the closest matchup between the two it's definitely maple favored in mid and shao favored in top and bot lane is the most contested a lot goes into it but mainly it's going to come down to jungle coordination and also if each side gets their preferred duo yeah, and teleports too, because like we saw in that first matchup as well, after the initial bloodbath in the bot side, now junglers are running down here, teleports are coming in as well, so there's Lee Sins finding double kills under towers. I think it's very crucial to keep all these things in mind, because bot lane seems like that's where they're drawing the battle lines. That's where they're going to go for the fight, and I think in the second match, there was a better uh, defense yeah. uh, from the side of RNG. They were able to, to hold their own a little bit better and prevent a lot of the plays that ended up being made, and that helped them keep it close and allow them to find the picks that would later give them the win. Yes, indeed. Uh, and yeah, that's, you know, what you're dealing with now. Now you have a best of five. You had one game each. We saw that RNG adapted that second time around. We see there again also uh, Xiaohu on the Lee Sin, who is making moves and finding those picks, as you say, which is going to be so crucial in this matchup. And we can't talk about the bot lane in isolation. So I'd like to come back to the supports. And I was so surprised, uh, happily surprised, actually, that Kai Wing was on your all pro list. Ming has been heralded as one of the best performing supports, I think, actually worldwide for years. He's always been fantastic. Ming VP. P is out there, but still, you guys think that Kai Wing edges out Ming for now. Let's dive a bit deeper into that and how that's going to influence this matchup specifically. Well, I, I think like Clement sort of said it when you're talking about the All Pro team is when these two two v twos have matched up, it has been Kai Wing and Doggo winning out, and I think that he even speaks more to Kai Wing's ability. The fact that he has a brand new AD carry next to him that he's not played before in Doggo, and it wasn't even like they had practice games in the PCS. No, he was playing against him in the finals, and now as they warm up throughout the 
the tournament, they have been heating up, looking better and better and better. And that 2v2 is critical on top of how you're able to influence the rest of the map. And I think we've seen from Kai Wing this year and also in the past, how good he can be on these melee engaged champions. And that's exactly what the meta is. Yeah, indeed. Uh, come and talk to me also about the development of the bot lane for RNG. Uh, Gala and Ming, and we already said, they actually didn't play around the bot lane that much in the regular season. It's a, it's a difference in style that we saw them show in the playoffs. What can you tell us about the evolution of these two? Well, Gala at first uh, played on the team called E-Stars where they were very bot lane focused. And part of the reason that this is, is we actually have seen Gala not really be able to stretch CS advantages quite uh, quite that much. The best AD carry domestically in the LPL is considered to be uh, Viper uh, coming over from the LCK, of course, in, in import. So what we have seen is typically that RNG plays weak side in the bottom lane. They leave Gala alone and they roam Ming around the map to create picks, usually in the top side they have the most dangerous top side and we even had a great quote from Xiao saying that wherever ming is is where the duo lane actually will play we have seen games where ming goes to top lane and he just stays there for five minutes going up with a lucian into the top lane and they can just swap the duo lane up so i think the greatest weapon of ming is not only his ability to engage and his role in the meta but also how far he can stretch these kind of weird situations where no other team in the planet really tries to play around that style and have someone like a support dictate where most of the action is happening or go into extended laning phases. Yeah, uh, indeed. There is so much between these two teams. Clement, uh, I'm going to give you 30 seconds for your prediction. Who's going to take it today, RNG or PSG? I think RNG will eventually take it 3-1. They have so many more outs. And I think the main reason is because you have a bunch of AD flexes that you can put mid that are very hard to crack. So Crying has a ton of no, uh, ton of fail-safe options in the Nocturne and the Renekton. If things get dire, they'll just slap these two champions on him and it'll be okay. You only have 10 seconds. I only have 10 seconds. It's RNG, the mid-game macro masters. They're going to keep it cool in the early game. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, they will be able to even come back from early game deficits. All right, let's see what happens. The MSI 2021 semifinals are right around the corner as RNG and PSG Talon face off in our opening series. PSG, you have proven to be a strong opponent. Even if you have beaten the small group, the situation has changed. Even if you have beaten